Good morning, dreamers. How are you today? Oh, a little bit of a different view for you today. Um, I just landed here last night and didn't move things around to my other seat. Um, yeah, last night a couple interesting things happened. I was part of a mock defense, if you will, for a friend who is um, defending his um, doctoral paper. So we're going to have a, another doctor around the place. Not around this place, but around our church very, very soon. He's done an excellent job, and his, his whole concept is relational engagement in therapy. Um, so basically, who you are and how it helps you or hindered you, just how, it's not even a help or hinder, it's a how who you are impacts your relationships with your clients. Now, at the end of it, we were going over questions and things like this. And I mean, the, the dissertation is tremendously organized. It's so wonderful. He's done a tremendous job. Um, I use that word too many times because it's true. <laughs> Sometimes the word is the word, and for him, the word is tremendous. <laughs> but we were discussing things, and we were talking about how this isn't just um, for people in who are becoming therapists. This is for people who, um, it, everybody, right? So basically, the core of who you are um, impacts everything you do. The true core. Not the core you want to present to the world and pretend is happening. So if I say my identity is Christian, but I'm not practicing, I'm not allowing it to affect my everyday life, then that's not actually the core of who I am. But then when motherhood affects every part of life, the core of who I am is mother. But if my job is what, like if everything um, juts out from the job, the job is the core um, or why I do the job or the motivation behind it, like that's where I find my identity. And so we were discussing how identity of the practitioner affects the practice, okay? That's what we were discussing. And it was so beautiful because it helped me grasp, even though this was not on the table for discussion at all, it helped me grasp why some very um, passionate conservative Jesus followers are frustrated and get angry and say there's an agenda for queer people, okay? Because they're saying, but your identity should be in Christ. Why do you say I identify as? Or, you know, because I, Marilyn, I identify as a straight, cisgender, female. But that's not the core of who I am. Yes, those things impact how I engage with life. If I'm going to flirt with somebody, it's definitely going to be a man. But that's not who I am. I am a passionate Jesus follower. That's the core of who I am. But there are other things, outliers of identity. And I think so often for the queer community, their identity in Christ has been this. And it's like, if you identify as a Christian, if you say that's my identity, but then you have these outliers that don't fit the box, you're broken. And, and the core doesn't match the outliers. And that's why people start to look at the outliers and go, well, if I can't have peace within my spirit because of this, I have to look more closely at these outliers. And like this was all filtering down. And I was like, God, thank you for helping me have a, an empathy and an understanding for why people get so angry when 
And it's not even anger as much as it's discomfort and frustration and concern. It really often, when I think of, of people like that are as passionate about Jesus as my parents and as passionate about their families as my parents. I'm just using them as an example, not because they've done anything against my kids. No way they have loved and engaged and embraced. But there are people that can love Jesus and have their identity in him at the same level as my parents. And they say, say, see you later. Stop it in its tracks. Do not allow it in your home. And yesterday I was like, there's concern that these young people are finding identity outside of Jesus, but that's not the case. At least not with my two. Like their identity is, boom, love Jesus. Everything stems from that. But they have been given the freedom, at least in my home, to, and in their world, to, to discover the outliers. But how they engage with that stems from Jesus. And it just kept coming back to a wagon wheel in my brain. You know how those old uh, covered wagons had those massive wooden wheels? There's a hub of the wheel. And then spokes, strong, very important spoke. You break a spoke, the whole thing's not going. It's like it's not going to go. The spokes are vital, but they all stem from the hub and then they're surrounded and held together by the rim and I just I developed this picture and I've been working on it it's already been back here but yesterday in talking it was like the hub of of the identity in Christ must be love because God is love that's the hub so my identity has to be love. If the divine is within me, it must be love. And then all the spokes coming out, justice, mercy, compassion, empathy, understanding, peacefulness, all of those things. And then the fruit of the spirit, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all of those things. They are the spokes. And without the spokes, the hub can't do its job. So the spokes are vital and important, but sometimes we focus on the spokes and we forget that there's this hub of love. That's the source of everything. And then it's held together with grace, the rim of grace. So I'm not even going to tell you about the second thing that happened because I'm just like gobsmacked at this wagon wheel picture. Take it or leave it, guys. I'm just spitballing here. It's earlier than I'm normally sitting at my table. And I'm just... I'm on vacation, so I'm just thinking. Take it or leave it. But whatever you do throughout your day, spend some time on some dreams and have some good ones. Sweet dreams. Bye.